Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. Yeah, we gon' talk, we gon' have fun. We be on fire, we be lit, lit. It's a unique hustle, big, big. Check it, check it, check it. It's a unique hustle. It's your boy, ECO, and I'm here with the lovely, amazing official, Miss Jamaica. What's going on? No, 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 Madeo. Well, go on. I want y'all to stop what you're doing right now. Go like, subscribe, follow us on all social media platforms. And I mean all, I mean all. I mean our Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Snapchat, you name it, we're on it. Just go ahead and Google us, Boss Talk Podcast 101. We'll pop up first in line. But if y'all want to see our visuals, you got to go over to our YouTube channel. There you can check out all our visuals. Don't forget to hit subscribe. Hit that notification bell because you don't want to miss out on any of this fire episode that we're putting out. But, it, you know, we do have some exclusive content now that you can't see unless you're a member. How you become a member is under each and every video, including this one right here in the description section, there is a link that says join our membership. That's because y'all see us on the street and be like, man, I love what y'all doing. Keep up the good work. How can we support the brand? This is how you can support the brand. Buy our membership. Thank you in advance. Have a blessed day. Hey, man, listen, man. We down in Houston, Texas. It's about to go down, man. We we uh, we done pulled up in the city, man. Uh, we down here after a storm. Mm -hmm. And then we got hit by another storm, man. Ross Ajay is in the building. Bum, buckler, buckler. <laughs> <laughs> How you doing, man? Medea, I know Medea, Medea, give a thanks. You don't know. Boss talk. <laughs> <laughs> Where the bosses talk? Where the bosses talk, you yes. know? Ooh, that's why you here, huh? Yeah. So, hey, man, listen, man, I'm going to hand it over to Miss Jamaica, man. She usually start this thing off right, man. So, okay. we're going we, we gonna to talk a little bit about your background, who you are as a person, and then we're going to go into the artistry, man. So, let's get ready for a fantastic voyage. All right. So, <laughs> born and raised in... You said Portmore. No, Spanish Town, Jamaica, right? Yeah. Grew up at Portmore. Grew up at Portmore. Yeah. How old were you when you moved to Portmore? Um, five months. Oh, that early? That early. Okay. So <laughs> when you were born in Spanish Town, you born with your mom and your dad in the same household? Nah, I was with my mom. My mom was actually, um, I think, 18 at the time when she had me young mother so she had my brother at 15 wow. and then had me at 18 so um she kind of went on a journey and was mm -hmm. like um she w came into portmore was walking i was like um does anybody want a baby um my dad seen her with me and was like come here and come talk to me let me know what's going on so she came over, they spoke. When you say your dad, you're talking about... My adopted father. Okay, okay, so we just want to clarify yeah, that. My adopted father was like, ah, come talk to me, let me hear what's going on. Um, after hearing her story, um, he decided that he would take me in. So you serious, she went around asking people if they want a baby. Yeah, who want a baby? Because she never had a choice. It's like 18, wow. two kids, feeding. Where was her parents? Her parents, her dad had moved to the States. Her mom at the time had just started a new relationship. So, you know, when mm. you got grown kids, well, for some families, when you got grown kids and somebody, and there's a new dynamic, and then when the woman isn't living yeah. in her own house, when that woman isn't the, 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 the she queen. With of, a man. When she's not the queen of her destiny. Right, right. So she has to put up and sacrifice a lot of things. So my mom was kind of the, the sacrificial lamb. And she had time. siblings? She No, she was the oldest at the time. Okay. So if she did have siblings. They, they wasn't were, on their own yet. No, nah, they were stuff. way younger. Right. They were way younger. So, you know, that's man. a part of life. She's strong. She is. So much respect to my mom. Just so you know it go. So that man... Took her in and took you in. No, he took me in. Took you in. Yeah, so we didn't, um, they didn't exchange at, um, I don't even remember, I think it's um, Barbara Gluden or Gloria or something. Mm -hmm. I don't remember the name right now off the bat, but they did an exchange on Mullines Road and it was at a, at the office of this lady. It was, she was a um, social worker. So they wow. did the exchange at the social worker's office and it's, that's how history came. So what happened to your older brother? Who had him? Did at the time, he his father had taken him at the age of about two and had brought him to the country in St. Elizabeth. Oh, so, so he his was dad living, took responsibility. His dad took and responsibility and brought him to his grandmother. Okay. So my brother grew up with his grandmother, okay. with his great-grandmother. So, you okay. know, that was kind of... So where was your biological father? Did you know who he was? Nah, no, no clue who he was until like way, 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 way old age. 
mm. old age. Old age. And then she told you. Um, who told you? Who? Both of them told me because we had a funny enough. My biological dad and I had a similar connection in terms of the places and the people we connected mm -hmm. with. So my friend was actually my my best friend at the time was actually my cousin. <laughs> I didn't know. And he didn't know that. He never knew. I never knew. Wow. So it's just one of those things where later on in life you find out that yo, my boy is my cousin. All right, so I'm going to look for his dad, who is my uncle, not knowing that that's my uncle I'm going to see. Mm. So just a weird dynamic of life. Did no, you ever uh, ask your dad, like, man, why what? weren't you there and, um, you know, have that discussion? Right. Some things you don't ask because you understand. Being an outside child with somebody who has a marital relationship. Okay. So you do get the dynamics of being, you know, it's not an outcast, but just being that outside child that you're going to get the rougher end of the, at, at, at the stick or the, or the dealings. You're going to be get dealt a rougher hand mm -hmm, being that outside mm -hmm. child as opposed to the one that lives in the luxury house and stuff like that. But, you know, that's a part of what shaped our character. So at the end of the day, I would not redo any of mm -hmm. what I've been through. Because you um, know what? I, I, always, I always ask <clears throat> a lot of people here um, in America who sit down at that same seat these questions, but... I like to, you know, since I'm interviewing a, a Jamaican, because I want to know the difference in the thought process. Is the thought process is the same as when people here go through the same situations? Because in cases like that, some people as children would be mad at the father or be mad at the situation, be like, oh, on, you know, yeah, you understand you're the outside child, but I'm still your child. Was that, Were you ever mad at him? No, because... I had a father. Mm. My because I actually had a family. Um, when I was adopted, I gained a mother and a father. Mm. So I lived in a in a family home. I was the only child in that home. So wow. even to this day, my dad is eighty five years old, and even to this day, if I pull up in Jamaica, my dad is gonna. The last time I was in Jamaica was January. My dad pulled up. I pulled up to my dad's house and stayed. I had my Airbnb. And my dad looked after breakfast every single morning wow. at 85 years wow. old. So that is something that I cannot. So it's like, oh, everybody, most males are mommy's boys. Mm -hmm. I'm Your a daddy's, daddy's boy. boy. That's, like that's real, big. That's that, big. That, that, that's real talk. Because they never had kids and you was that blessing that came to them. So that's, that's why for crazy. me, so that's why for me, it was no regret because I grew up in a house that was full of love. Never had money, but I knew what love felt like. I knew what care felt like. I knew what I sacrifice that. felt like. I knew what going that extra mile felt like, like somebody showing that's unconditional love. When you birth your own child, that is love. But loving somebody else's child that never came out of your womb or mm -hmm. came out of your balls is a whole different level of love you have acquired and have aspired to. So. Wow. And I love, and I'm not a spiritual person. And what I love about the whole situation is the fact that when your mom took you looking for someone to take you, God put her in a place where this was a home that didn't have no kids that you were going to be loved because you could have been in a different situation. I swear. So that's why, like, believe me, I became the only child, the nephew, the cousin to like a big set of family, my father's side of family, my mom's side of family. So. It's because you know that some will accept you yeah. in the family, some won't. So for me, it's like that's kind of what shaped me. Like you learn that, okay, not everybody's going to be mm. on your team. So from early days, this kind of, this whole setup, this relationship kind of shaped how I viewed life, how I approached stuff. So, you know, at the end of the day, it's still a blessing. Like I would, like I said earlier, I would never change it for the world. So. You know, we do give thanks. No, I, I think I think God has a way of working it out every yep, time. He you, know, you don't have to worry about trying to figure it out. Nah, he figures it out he for figures you. It out for you. And right? if you try to do something, you end up messing it up a little bit. You know what I mean? I I think that you you like I said, everything that you've been the thing that I heard that sticks out the most of what you said is if you could go back, you wouldn't change a thing. Same. I yeah. felt that because at the end of the day, your destiny is being fulfilled. I'm where I'm supposed to be. If we never went through that. I wouldn't be on Boss Talk talking. Right? Come on, like, now. Real mm -hmm. talk. Like, if we never did stuff like that, we wouldn't be here. So that is kind of your journey is your journey. Your purpose is your purpose. 
And like you say, God puts you in the places that you're supposed to be. Everything that we're doing mm -hmm. is, is of divine purpose. It's predestined. predestined. In, in, in that Rocky movie, he said, it's not about how many times you get knocked down, but how many times you, you get, get back up. up. Yep. Yep. You see what I'm saying? Yep. And and you got back up. Seven times fall, eight times mm -hmm. rise. See what I mean? Yep. And I think that's heavy. I think that's big <laughs> because a lot of people don't know how to maneuver and don't come out, become mad me and all kind of stuff. You know that. It's all right. My biggest thing with being who I am at this point is being an inspiration. See? Like real talk. That is the purpose of why we do what we do and why we do it with so much vigor. So much vim, be so much to, somebody to else. be a blessing to somebody else. Exactly. Because here, what it is, somebody was a blessing to me. Mm. Mm. So I want to be just the same to the people I encounter with. So at times, my friends would say, Yo, you still act like you. Because I used to go to church. And they'd be like, Yo, you still act like you're a Christian, even though you're a Rasta. I said, Yo, certain seeds were planted. And at the exactly. end of the day, you kind of know how to move in the world. You know that you're not just here to exist, you're exactly. here for a purpose. So it's like, it is our duty to find out what your purpose in this life is. What are you here for? What is what is my duty to serve? What is what am I serving in? So mm -hmm. for me, it's always all right. I'm I'm youth driven. I like kids. But what about people when they try to interrupt your evolution? Yeah, you know, when you think about you it, you just said I, I was going to ch church and I'm being a roster. What about? That ain't your business to even try to understand how to realize what he's doing or who he is. Nah, and you forever moving anyway. I'm, so <laughs> where you at today, you won't even be in, in five days from in now, five, 10 years from now. That, that so a, why am I going to sit and question what you do as who your character or your spirituality is? Uh, I saw somebody ask, uh, uh, like, a, like a little meme type thing. A girl kid went up to a guy and asked like, what would you want God to, if you could ask God to, to change one thing? And he's like, uh-uh, uh-uh, I don't know the blessing I'd, nah. I don't know the blessing I'd be in, I don't know the situation I'd be in. So when he, you know, like, that stood out to me. Yeah, I agree. That stood out to me. Why would I dare question God? Exactly. Why the hell would I dare question you God? You wouldn't if you was in his face. Like most people, they, they become... They, if on, you, the, on the internet, <laughs> you it's, can all, do everything. It's, it's all talk. Blah, 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 blah. But <laughs> coming in my face now, it's, it's a whole totally different. different situation. So think about if we like that. That's how God is when you Look, get in his face. You can't... You, so why am I jump up in his face? You're not. So then for me to say I would want to change something, I'm jumping in his face. There so, you go. So for me, I got to stay humble. That's so true. I think you 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 got it. You hitting it on the knob, man. Uh, I'm gonna be honest with you. I, I like to jump around, man. Uh, so you was in that uh, movie, Bob Marley movie. Yeah. Um. They they, they messed up and gave me a part in no, that movie. No, 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 no. You a damn movie star? No, no, no. You got some champagne or some got a cup with boss talking or something. This guy's a movie star. So you I know. you was in that movie. You and and really played your part. I was gonna ask you when I met you, like, what could I do? If I'd have been in the movie, did they have, no, they went to America? Nah, we went to the UK. We the went UK? To, yeah, right. so we well, was in the well, UK. Well, I seen some people talking kind of like me. I uh, could have uh, got in that thing. Nah, ain't nobody talking like that. <laughs> no? Everybody, no, nah, man, everybody. What, nobody? Nobody. Everybody attack like how me attack. No, you see the real, <laughs> How am I gonna get in there? You ain't gonna get no American side in the movie, man. <laughs> I see, like when you when I've seen that part where you came out, we watched the movie over and over again. Yeah, okay, much over. respect. When, whenever he had got shot and then he mm. went oh, up to the hills, oh the blood clot, that white boy. <laughs> <laughs> I was so impressed, man. They like say I said, it wasn't me. I didn't have no yeah, problem. Nah, because you know what it is. Um, the real story. Bob Marley and Claudia Marshall support best friends. Okay. Mm. And Bucky Marshall as well. How so, did they meet? Do you know? Um, they grew up in the same area. Okay. So from kids, they were bridging. And you know, Claudia, even though he was a area leader, he was still one of those area leaders that um, kind of had some fearness to him. So it's like Bob's spirit and his spirit, like they drew to each other. So they were, they were best friends. So even when the shooting happened, when the shooting happened and um, he went up to the hill, Claudia kind of had to just be like, yo, that's above my pay grade type thing. That wasn't my order. Mm -hmm. That was above my pay grade. So just declaring 
you know, his innocence in the situation. How did you prepare me. yourself for the role? Um, let me give you Because a, you didn't have no experience in acting before this. All right, inside information. Remember I said earlier I was a Christian? Right. So you know that at church you have the Christmas plays, mm -hmm. you have the Easter play, mm -hmm. and then we have, so you see like our soldiers have Hell Week. Okay. Right? We got Youth Week. So in Youth Week you gotta come up with, in one week you gotta come up with a, with a play, a chorus, a little poem with a group saying the poem. You gotta come up with, a, do a debate, you gotta do a quiz. So you gotta wow. come up with, for one whole week, for some, from Sunday, to Saturday, Saturday is a trip, so from Sunday to Friday, quiz, play, chorus speaking, all of that in that one week. So I kind of experienced hell week mm -hmm. from <laughs> I was growing up in terms of knowing how to prepare okay. on the fly. Then again, I'm an artist, I'm a musician, so studying lines, knowing lines is going to be a little bit, because most of us in the movie are actors, are musicians. Mm -hmm. So when we go on set, it's like, seem like you're uh, memorizing a song. You memorize the lines and then by the time da, 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 lines are stuck. So it's easier when you have the little background where Advantages. nobody nobody really counts those. It's after, like real talk, I never counted it to be honest. Like in the initial stage, I never did. But then it's afterward I'm sitting, I'm like, yo, Auntie Madge, thank you, you know? Yeah. Because those are the plays that I did. Mm -hmm. Those are the church plays and that little hell week, that youth week that we did played an integral part in preparing me for a time like this. Mm -hmm. So when I would say that I don't have um, big screen um, experience. experience, but then I have a small stage, being in front of people, being comfortable on stage, so in, and reciting lines. So I kind of played a, a nice- But were you still nervous though? Nah. Was not nervous at all? I, I like being in front of the camera. How many, hey. different, how, many, how many different takes they had to do? They had to be like, cut, start over. All right. Cut, start over. For, all right, I'm going to give you a joke. So for that scene that I said, who the blood clot, this white boy. Okay. So for that scene, we maybe did like five takes, but just from different angles. Mm. And not even on my part. Because most times when my lines come up, like if I get a whole lot of lines, it I run them out less than three, but then... It's gonna take like a fifteen minutes or half an hour to change the angle. Yeah, 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 yeah. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So now this is where it gets tricky. So it's like it's quick, doing the lines are quick, mm -hmm. but then it's changing that it's a changing of the angles now to do it over. So now when you're doing it on set, it's not as funny as it is when you watch it. That's right, that's right. You get what I'm saying? So now when I look back and I'm seeing the line and everybody laughing at the line, I'm like, oh shit, this, <laughs> li this line was not that funny. Uh -huh. Not even nowhere funny when I, I this line was serious. <laughs> and then to know that when you go in the theater, every, when you go in the, in, in the movies, everybody's like, ah, oh, kick it. I'm like, shit. That is funny as shit. This <laughs> line was serious as heck. <laughs> but how different was it for you? Because you, when you're actually there in emotion, you know, um, acting, you're not seeing in your mind how it all going to turn nah. out. So when you actually saw yourself on that big screen for the first time and see it all put together, how did you feel about your skills? Real talk, I felt accomplished. I felt like I went up one more notch, like in just in terms of accomplishment, like, damn, I did something that, because you know, every kid watching the movies, I want to be, I want to be in the movies. I wanna mm -hmm. be. So then, oh shit, I actually got in the movies. So I'm sitting there and you know, a little bit of tear running down your face. Come on trying, now. You're trying, you know, not to let anybody feel from But it's accomplished. But you feel accomplished. You brought you your feel, girls with you when you watched it? Nah. Um, when I went to Jamaica, actually, it was more of a business move. I sent my okay. family though. But, when I went down, I went with one of my managers, okay. Bruce. So we kind of set it up where we wanted it to be more of a business move mm -hmm. as opposed to just a family, family. Ex experience. Because I wanted the family to experience it as the family. Did they watch it? Yeah, they did. And what did they tell you? Um, they loved it. My, <laughs> daughter, my, my youngest is still raving over that. Every day I get a new call. Oh, dad, can you talk to my friend? Just say hi. <laughs> yeah. 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 I, I, I think when you look at just 
you doing those lines, you spending that time doing it, you should feel accomplished. You know what I mean? It's it, you 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 doing something that really a lot of people not. not I have Don't never have done the it. opportunity. Um, to do. But did you go back after you had done it and really when you were watching it say I could have did that a little better? Mm. No. Nah. You didn't even second guess. No, nah, I didn't even because honestly, it's like because you asked me earlier as well how I prepared for the role. Yeah. Um, Dean Fraser. Mm. Dean Fraser, who is a saxophonist mm -hmm. that plays with Taurus Riley, Black Soul Band. Dean Fraser wears a, a bangle on his hand, which is an ode to Claudia Masso. Okay. Wow. You get what I'm saying? So, that from early days being around Dean, Dean as my mentor, I kind of heard the stories of Claudia. So, I'm, I was a fan from the sidelines. So now when you actually get to play this part, I call Dean up and be like, yo, I got the part for Claudio. What do I need to do? He's like, make sure you get the bang around the neck, boss. <laughs> Cause he wears a, Claudio wears a, a bang around the yeah, neck. Yeah, He's yeah. like, boss, make sure you get the bang around the neck, boss. <laughs> so that's kind of the standout of Claudio. Once you see any picture with him, you notice there's a bracelet around his neck. It's a very thick bracelet. So. You know, things like that you hear. So when they audition, when I got the role and they're asking me for my input into the character and stuff, I'm like, okay, we need this. We need it to be this color. Da, da, da. So now I'm well immersed. They're like, wait, this. Did you research? This man yeah, is he's, like on his part. He's really playing his part. But then that's from early days. So it's not even like that's from the moment I got the part to the next day. They're like, oh. How does he know? But little did do, do they know that I already know this person in terms of been hearing about this person mm -hmm. for so many years. So now everything is predestined. Did but when research. you went in um, to audition, from what I understand, you did not go in to audition for that part. You went into audition for a band player. I uh, yeah, I and went for Seiko for um, for Seiko Patterson. Right. And because funny enough, I did that part. Got a stand innovation in the in the audition room. Then they wanted me to audition for Bunny Whaler. Mm. Um, took the lines, went outside, but then I saw Bunny Whaler's son. So I was like, nah. Yeah, he need to do that. I can't do I can't be the father better than the son. Right. So, you know, out of respect, respect that. out of respect, I gave up. I gave that, that up. I was like, nah, I can't. So I said it to a lady and she was like, What? Nobody mm -hmm. does that. That's mm -hmm. so honorable. That's so nice of you. Mm -hmm. Well, my friend's daughter wasn't an, was an idiot for doing that <laughs> shit. Mm -hmm. But look at where we are now because yeah. Claudia ended up playing a more integral part than Seiko did within the movie. So, But not only that, when I saw pictures of both of you together, the resemblance... The resemblance is uncanny for real. Exactly. It is uncanny. And I felt like... Oh, you, you know how you went in for one part, but they already probably saw that. Them. They saw that the resemblance, like, no, we can't so put them for this. You see a couple of maybe yeah, they just want to see sure. you say a couple of lines here. Okay, connect to a different character. Let's see if it's yes. just okay. But did you play because okay, Claude? Because when I was watching the movie, Claudie Massup, he was his best friend. But was he also a band player or that you did you play two different roles? Nah, I only played one role. Then who was that? Because somebody that looked just like you was actually playing. In the band. That's that's Seiko. That's Seiko. Y'all that, resemble. That's Seiko. Because I keep watching them like, and it's because of the hat too, you it's know. It's because of the hat. It's because Seiko, of the hat. Seiko had a, but his own was a more brown. He mostly had on a it's brown. It's almost like a brownish reddish brownish color. Brownish reddish, yeah. So yeah. I keep looking at both people and I'm like, I know it's him that again, he played two parts. Now nah, I make sure I keep my berry, you know. That's like, <laughs> Lordy, Lord, look what them do to Claudie. <laughs> but, okay, another part about the movie I wanted to know yeah. is... Because there's certain parts, okay, one moment, I don't know if Claudia did gain weight or something, because in the beginning, Claudia looked, you know, slender, the part where, you know, him jumping the car, he wasn't that ch chunky there, but in the part where, were you, was this Claudia? Claudia was the one who said, um, Exodus, when he was in the house? No. Nah. That was that was Seiko. Seiko. See, I get mixed up <laughs> that was Seiko. because nah. right there he was more chubby nah, right there. So Seiko is a is is a, is a chubby man. Okay, <laughs> I, I promise you, I thought that was you again in that nah. part. Nah, me every time you see me, I'm with a gun. Okay, so okay. me a gun man. Cause you was the one who tell him say go back to Jamaica. Yeah, I was like, yo, time to come back to Jamaica. Exactly, so it's I like, know that part. You know, him him, him respect the two because at the mind you. 
these two gentlemen who approached him in England are his friends, right. but at the same time, they're the two premier dons mm -hmm. of Jamaica at the who time. Was the other, what's the name of the other don? Bucky Marshall, Bucky who was Marshall. played by Cornelius Grant. So mm -hmm. big up my brother Cornelius. Mm -hmm. Wow, I just um, I've got a lot of questions. I've yeah. seen you. I've seen you at the uh, it both in Dallas and here in Houston, man, doing your thing. You uh, killed the stage. Thank you very much. Um, how old were you when you got when you felt like you wanted to start your music yeah. career? Um, I started mu I started writing music in church. So I know I started about twelve, thirteen. Wow. And were you singing in church too? Yes, I was. Um, that's where. You know them tell me some song like Michael Jackson. Oh yeah, <laughs> what song was that? Yeah, sing, um, sing a Michael Jackson um, song. No, it's not even. Wasn't even a Michael well, it's Jackson just some song. Some song. song. Oh, wait a minute. Um, wait a minute. Shit. Wait a minute. When I feel afraid, think I've lost my way. Stay your here right beside me. Yeah. Nothing will I fear as long as you are near. <laughs> I don't even remember, but I remember but this. They, they but, say, oh, you sound but, like Mike. But at the funny time, at that time in my life, my voice was thin. That's right, because right. so, at 13, yeah, you so didn't change So my voice yet. was thin, so I know that, like, when because it was a group song. We had a group named All For Christ at the time. Oh, that's cool. And I remember when my part came in, like, when I started singing, like, the whole balcony. I remember the place was, it was a concert. The place was packed. Mm. I remember the whole balcony was, ah! I was like, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> Hearing all them church girls scream. Oh, my God. He's so Man. like Michael. I'm like, oh, shit. I, yeah, got, I, it. Got, to, I got to do music now. <laughs> I got to do this. So that made you want to do it. That made me want to do it even more. <laughs> it always boils back down to the girls. It always boils down to the girls. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 you know, I see you, like, when you hit that stage, how is it, man, like, to see all those people, man, and, and just to be, you know, in the, in the front of all those people like that at this stage of it it's a dream and a blessing come true um it's like let me put it this way dream come true seems cliche but you know you sit down and you want to go into the world to offer your music to people for them to see how they accept it to see how they receive it so being able to do that is an honor so when you get to go out in front of people and you're received in a favorable way you can't ask for anything else. Did, okay, how did you and Sean Paul link, and like, how did y'all, you know, basically, how did you end up just, you know, going on a tour and stuff with him? All right, um, our connection came through News, um, the label manager, who is okay. Brooklyn News. Um, so News was my manager at the time. Um, we went to a party, met Sean at a party. 2016, first time. Um, he was chopped it up. He was like, yo, when I get some free time, we we'll link up. Um, we linked up, I think, in 2017 after I just dropped um, a song. Ended up at his studio. He's like, yo, I want to start a label. I want to restart by my label, put some new artists under it. So he's like, yo, I'm bringing news into the fold. But if I'm taking news, you're part of the package too. So I'll give you some assistance production-wise and stuff like that. So I grabbed the opportunity. I ran with that because I wasn't on any imprint at the time. So man, that was kind of a big thing for me. So all 2018, what we did was just write, develop the skills, did some recordings um, to a higher level. Because all right, you're doing it at this level now. You come to the... You have to go to the Sean Paul level of doing mm -hmm. things to yeah, understand yeah. what it what is required to be outside on the road and stuff. Um, twenty, you know, COVID happened, so everybody take a break. Um, twenty twenty two, I got my first opportunity to open for him. That is twentieth anniversary for Dirty Rock album. So we did that. <clears throat> New York Webster Webster was an amazing experience. Um, so from there, it just kind of started that was a catalyst to where we are now so every time he came to the states i was there happened to be in the states at the same time so mm -hmm. you know sometime i just took the opportunity and just ran out with him without even him knowing see me pull up at the venue he's like yo you, you want to perform like you you don't have to ask that let's do this yeah. so, you know i'm always i'm i'm always ready to perform type vibe so you know that's kind of how 
the whole energy came about and he was like, yo, you know, my artist, so my artist got to be, you know, we got to be everywhere he is. So that's how we out on the, on the road now doing this world tour for this year. So, Man, congratulations on that. Thank you. I, I got to ask this. Um, being from Jamaica, you know, you've seen, you seen the rise of Sean Paul. Yeah. Um, how do they categorize Sean Paul as an artist in Jamaica? Because you know how, like, me growing up, you know, you have your reggae, you have your dance hall, you have your loser rock, you have all these different genres of, you know, Jamaican music, Jamaican culture. But even although then, you know, Bob Marley, to, everybody stood out different. He's, like, in his own different category. And to me, Bujo was also the same. Like, I don't even consider him as, he's, like, on a different level. Okay. You know what I mean? That's me personal. No, that's okay. Um... Then, you know, you have a Beanie Bounty and all that. But Sean Paul, how do they categorize? Because I've heard things like, oh, he's not really this or he's not really that. All right. Um, Jamaica has a way of... I want to put this carefully. Jamaica has a way of um, putting you in a category that don't even exist. Mm -hmm. In the sense where, okay, if you step out of Jamaica and have started to try to establish yourself outside of Jamaica, you're now considered an international artist. So being an international artist, you're no longer Jamaica's artist. Wow. Mm -hmm. Jamaica likes its local energy. It's very local. So if you go and you go on too much, if you do too, too, too much collabs with pop artists or you do too much collabs with it, Hip hop artist, you'll be considered not to be a part of the genre, just out of ignorance, not because they want to do that, but it's just that they don't have it that you're still connected to the streets. That's all it is. So when you go international, in their mind, you're not connected to the streets. So with Sean, Sean is considered the biggest international artist we've ever had. So they'll put him in the pop category, be like, oh, Sean is pop, because you hear him on urban stations and stuff like that. So it's not out of disrespect, it's just the lack of understanding that even though you've gone international, you're still connected to the source, you're still in the streets, that's how you find these songs to be able to connect with people outside. Is he uh, the only artist in Jamaica that has done the most collabs with artists in the United States? Has there any been any other Jamaican artist that has done this many collabs? No, but then it's not even just collabs. If a label wants to break an artist, they're coming for Sean Paul. Mm -hmm. So when he was signed to Atlantic Records, if Atlantic wanted to break an artist, they're paying him with Sean. If Island Records want to break an artist at the time that he was in that contract, they're going to pair him with Sean. So it's just a business move. Most times why he does that much collapse. So it's just understanding the dynamics behind the scenes in terms of label wise. And at the same time, it, it keeps him in front of your face just the same too, because these, for instance, Sean Tovalo, I don't know if you remember Tovalo. No. She was a model, but Sean did a song with her. She became one of the biggest artists in Europe. Wow. Dua Lipa, the same thing. Dua Lipa was a model. Sean did a song with Dua Lipa. Dua Lipa is now one of the biggest streaming artists in the world. I wish more Jamaican artists would do more collabs because in my mind, I'm thinking it brings the attention to Jamaica number one. What are you singing about? Huh? What are you singing about? Life, period. Everybody go through similar what is, stuff. Um, most of our artists, what they sing about is not palatable for people's play. Mm. Can you play everything that our artists are putting out now for your kids? No. Simple as that. But in America, they have drill music and all of that. They got that's not Jamaican music. We're not putting our music to their standards. We're not judging our music by no. Their but standards. I'm saying their music, their drill music and stuff like that is going out there. It's to not the going nowhere. Like it's that. just in a pocket. It's just in a pocket. <laughs> that's just in a pocket. That shit is just in a pocket. England started drill music. Oh really? Yeah. I Man, know Chicago England. started drill nope. music. Don't I come here with that. Know nope. that. England started. Man, nobody want to hear that. No. You coming over here? Now we about to have. No. I thought this was gonna be a good no. show. So no, don't come. So you listen. doing the same thing listen. that Jamaica do? She come over no, here listen. and she start taking no. stuff from America. Right. No, let me teach you something that you oh, never you know. Try to break it down. No, to let me teach you now. UK is the start of every culture, every pop culture. UK started the Afrobeat wave. Not mm. Africa. The wave. The wave. The wave in terms of the acceptance on the West. Okay. UK started that wave. 
when it comes to your R&B music, most of your R&B. Oh, no, nah, we're not going to me. do that, bro. Listen to me. Nah, we're not going to do listen. that. Most of your I'm R&B not. writers are from the UK. They might be from there, no, but, but listen, you're telling you're, you're me that the blues me. and, the, and gonna, all the stuff we done, the gonna, blues started in, gonna, in, in, in there. You hear what I said? I said, I said R&B. And yeah, I'm going to say, okay, no, I need, you know, Mississippi, blue, man. No, blues is, blues is American thing. You talking about America. R&B is not American. It's not synonymous to America alone. It came from rhythm no, and blues. No, listen, it's, uh, re- really? So just because your name, so I mean, rhythm say, and blues, well, baby. So just because your name Without is, no, the blues, listen, you know, Ameri- this stuff you, know Ameri- you know, America is good Ray at, Charles started no, today you know, on what, blues. you know, America is good I, at, so hold on, so hold on, hold on, so, so hold on, hold on. America is the first place that had a radio station and music instruments. Ray Charles. Hold did on, you watch the you movie? Ain't, you ain't, you ain't <laughs> did you watch the movie? You ain't answer me. Ray Charles was the first you ain't one. Answer me. To me. Jamie Foxx showed us that. Really? Really? Yeah, he That's showed what you're us. really trying to go with? I this? believe it. Uh, uh, so you never seen the Beatles? Never. Oh, that's why. That, when I see them, that wasn't what we you do. You never seen the Beach Boys. That ain't what we do. You didn't that ain't really? what we do. Is it so that nice ain't, to be that ain't in what we California? Do. No. Remember you used to see? You remember you used to see? See? No. <laughs> Catch it, there. Ray Charles. <laughs> see? I got a woman way over town. That's, that's way that's back. good to me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Come on, you better check your... Don't play, man. But you like, know this what I do. But, but like I say, you see, fashion, the UK started fashion. Man, no, we, can, we can argue this all day. Because Carl guess what Kanai, Cross Colors, Hip Hop, Tupac. No, here it is. Tupac, yeah, you the first one took his shirt when did, off. No, when did hip hop start? No, y'all had it. Y'all can't. Hold on, 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 hold on. We're still going on in the day of America, they are back, back of the class. And no! America is back of the class. You got to be out your day. You're the last world power. Man. You're, you're the last world power. You got yourself. to be. You got be to be. yourself. You're the last me, world power. The fuck say you're the last world power. Me just, and let me just you're say this. Trouble. Let me just say this right now. We the ones really help for uh, uh. Sean Paul to be international really? with these artists we got over really? here. From Beyonce really? oh, to God, all God. these dudes. Ah. You know what I'm talking about? So stop, so don't go there, don't go so there. You know what I'm going to say now? So when GZ <laughs> drive them, so when GZ drive them, Sean Paul. I know I worry about so Jay-Z. So hold on, hold on, so when G- them tennis, Beyonce, they don't exist. They, so watch it No, now. you got to be out your mind. Beyonce, they don't exist. Beyonce, they don't exist. Beyonce, they don't exist. Why Cliff? Yo, why Cliff is Boy, the one that, that, don't listen am I right? Don't listen to me. Why Cliff? Why Cliff? There wasn't no damn Jay-Z. There wasn't no damn Jay-Z. There wasn't no damn Jay-Z. There was why Cliff. Hold on, hold on, hold on. We going in. Let's hear his No, hold on, hold on. We going in. Hold on. Better do something. Hold on, listen. Yeah. Well, when you say his part, then you rebut. Okay, let's wipe go. on the rebut. Wipe on the butt. <laughs> when they wipe on the butt. But watch your thing, I know. When Jay Z drive down Sean Paul on Jamaica Avenue, for stop him and say, Yo, yo, him and DM dash a drive and circle the block for stop Sean. For say, Yo, man. I'm streaming 46 times and you streaming and your song is playing 42 times. Yo, we need to connect, man. The man had a book to tell Sean how much times his song was playing on the radio. This man was tracking his playing, his, his, his weekly numbers, in how many times? What year was that? This was in the two, early 2000s. Okay. No, I'm just showing you. Hold, hold on, on, slow up, slow up. Let me get in there. Slow up, hold on. slow up. So I'm showing you the levels of which we way ahead of the curve. We been way, remember, Cool Irk started hip hop. That came from Jamaica, my man. Man, that man was in New York with that bull crap, man. If it yeah, had everybody it went nowhere. And, and everyone, and, and, New York. No, and everybody it went nowhere. Everyone, hold on. It, it wouldn't have went no damn Y'all well. ain't know nothing about Virgil. Y'all, y'all ain't know nothing about Virgil. Y'all ain't know nothing about Virgil. Yo, you need a push. You nah, need a push. No, nah, we never needed to push. You we need gave y'all push. something. Jamaica gave y'all something. No, we actually helped each other, but I'm going to be real with you. You ain't helped go back. We got to go back. We helped you. We gave you a journal. Let me just say this right now. I got to say this is right now when you met Jay Z back in when was that? No, I don't. Early I never met him. No, um, two thousand when Sean he Sean pulled up did. on Sean. That's cool, but before that, you gotta understand Jay Z was already influenced to even get where he was to be able to be able to talk. Don't say nothing to Sean. He had to be around the certain people to even get his music to where it needed to be. That was a lot of artists that he was influenced by. Cool Hurt was having to be one of the sources, but I'm telling you right now, he didn't just start off like he was. So. Beyonce really without her, Jay Z not even the same Jay Z. Just like Beyonce not the same Beyonce. But without 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 and, Beyonce, and Sean this, is the let same Sean. Of course he is. Ah, that, yeah, that's he, right. So that's why I'm but saying I'm he had hits. But I'm trying to get up there. You gotta let me get up there. Beyonce basically. 
from Wycliffe and her doing that with Destiny Child, they didn't have no J. They didn't need no J. They was going to blow anyway. You know what I'm saying? So all I'm saying is J dope. Don't get me wrong. But this connection that Sean made with Beyonce was magical because of their talent. True. Because they, they, all that other stuff is cool. But when they got on that, 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 that music together, together yeah. you couldn't deny that so, that talent was just out of this world. So why y'all were so afraid for the Jamaican to do one of the color with? Well, well, first of all, that, I'm not afraid of nothing. I would love to see that, but uh, uh, you, you know, know already that you know, mm -hmm. I'm I'm ready to get uh, out of Houston now because Miss Jamaica and I have too many damn Jamaicans here right now. <laughs> <laughs> listen, listen. Let me tell another these people. Them tell you this. They make a little. We but we tell our See <laughs> Our little, but we there every bomb of class when I wear you go. You find one Jamaica member if you go out and die under the sea. You find true. one Jamaica L.A. Lewis one here. <laughs> I'm telling you right now, man, I just, I love the Jamaican culture ever since I, I've been with my wife for 21 years, man. Much respect. And, and to be to honest with you, man, I learned so much through her about the culture, you know. And it, it, I already listened to music, you know, yeah. but Patra was Patra my girl. Was his girlfriend. I was a Patra. Patra. Some girl I Some girl I fit, oh, they, oh, come on, shit. man. Oh, you shit. know Tupac was in the car with on that well, one video. He was rolling <laughs> with him. You know what I'm telling you? I knew that was before I met my wife. And the Shabba Damn. Ranks. Shabba Ranks. He was another one. Now my manager be liking Shabba. My manager said that when he goes to Jamaica, he's getting a, a bowl of fruits like what Shabba ha had in the video. <laughs> <laughs> nigga said that shit stood out in his uh, brain. Like man said, nigga, when I get to Jamaica. <laughs> I want a ball like Shabba had in front of him, nigga. Them fruits, I want to just dig in them motherfucker. I'm like, nigga, what's up? And Jamaican fruit is totally different from these American fruits. We're There's not so finna do this. Y'all not finna do me today. I mean, Yo, but are you serious? Listen, you can't listen. say it wasn't. But America, you can't get, America get them me in today. Mississippi, say all of their bodies today. Where are you getting your fruit from? Because they're straight Florida, Jamaica, straight Florida and uh, basically Amica, Amica. California. But we get Jamaica, the fruit from Jamaica. But Jamaica get ours from the tree right there. There, California speaking. and Florida do too. They got lemon yeah, trees and everything. Yeah, but y'all imported to get it here. No, not California and no, Florida. I'm talking, Atlanta. I'm talking for Texas. We talking Texas now. We oh, Texas. now you trying to make it a Texas thing. I'm talking, now I'm it's really Texas. Gonna get, let me pull up my chain. <laughs> <laughs> so we gotta make sure I got this out. <laughs> we, we're going in. Ding, 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 okay. ding, ding. Okay, guys. Okay, okay. <laughs> let, me just, let me just say this, man. I'm, I'm being real honest with you, man. You guys... Y'all are dope, bro. I love the way the vibe is and the music and the way y'all pretty much come together, man. And go everything. The, this the show. I've been to a lot of shows now. Is electrifying from the first to the last act. You know, like Much it's respect. just all go mode the whole time. You don't lose the essence of it as the show proceeds. And when Sean comes up, he, he, you know, he's Sean Paul. So and, and, he but, goes right to where it needs to but be. But I gotta ask you a question: If Sean Paul was not fair skinned. Like her, okay. As a Jamaican artist, do you think he'd be in the places he is internationally now? He'd still be in the places he's at because the talent speaks for itself. Wow. Because so all right, in America, I'm gonna give you a joke. Okay. In America, I'm just, talent, I'm just asking. In being international, because you know, before I came here, you know, in Jamaica, you don't say color. Nah. Right. It's just whether you're white, black, Chinese, whatever. You're just Jamaican, right? Yeah. So, but coming to America, it, everything is this black man, this white man, this, 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 whatever. Everything is by, oh, you can pass because you light skin, but this person, because they dark skin, they get a little bit more hassle. And in the entertainment business or in, example, in entertainment industry, I've heard here, like you could have a dark skin guy here and a, a light skin guy here, but because this light skin guy, or even for girls, she light skin and she, you know, have the full package, she's more marketable. So they're going to push her more than this person over here. All right, we'd, you got to remember that the West, the West, as opposed to Jamaica, deals with colorism. Well, Jamaica deals with colorism. The, the West deals with racism. Yeah. So yeah. you find that, can we be honest now, we're going we right. to be agile. We're not going to be frank. We're going to be agile. <laughs> Is it? He tiptoed. He's he got good A and R training. <laughs> Want to make sure he, he say this correctly. Okay, go so on. So it's like when you're dealing with people outside of Jamaica, you're dealing with brands and all of that. So they try to look for people that fit their 
fuckery that them trying to perpetuate on the world. Mm -hmm. Now, remember in Jamaica, is, as a dancehall artist, you might not know this. Mr. Jamaica might know this. As a dancehall artist, the uglier you are, is the bigger your career is. No, I've mm. seen it. I've seen it. Notice a big ugly man a big, star. Th that's the one. Like Sean might be the pretty Sean and Shaggy might be the two prettiest, mm. and Dexter Dabs <laughs> might be the couple handsome man. Them will get you, but everybody else has to be an ugly motherfucker. Yeah, so yeah. An ugly man winning a dance hall, cutting at your face. Yeah, your yeah, face yeah. So that was the vibe. So you find that for us, even with Sean, Sean is considered to be Sean is not. So the, the, the struggle that Sean faced in Jamaica as opposed to here is the fact that he's of Miss Jamaica's complexion. Mm -hmm. So he's a pretty boy. So he's going to go through too easy. He needs to struggle. So when you're ugly and, you, and your face full of bump and you have the cut in your face, they'll be like, oh, yo, this is a yes, him. Yo, this is him. We need to put him out there. He needs help. Oh, my God, he needs help. We need to put, <laughs> turn him into a star. So that's Jamaica's approach to the artistry. Here, it's they, different. Th here they think of marketability. Right. So it's just on that. So in, in with marketability in, in America, being that the darker skin is the minority, mm -hmm. they try to push you to the majority, and the majority is light-skinned, so they want you to be, you know, if you are a mulatto, a little bit light in complexion, like, you know, mm -hmm. She, oh, she, yeah, I miss Jamaica. She, 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 she bridges the gap. Right. She, she's in between. So now you can go to that, you could go to that. So that's basically what yeah. they're looking yeah. at. So the pointed nose, yeah, the, so the pointed nose instead of the flat, big nose, all that so comes looking, into play no, over look, here in America. No, the, all of that comes Yeah, so, yeah. So you that's come what, in here, are they looking at you like, like a lot of people what is he doing want, in here? Call a spade a spade. We're dealing right. with people who want to make sure that you're, say it's house niggas. People like house niggas mm -hmm. and not the field niggas. Never did. You see what I'm saying? So you find that so even with, with Sean, Sean acceptance is not because of his skin. Here, it might be some some levels of that might be here. Oh, he's marketable. My God, let's do it. But then in Jamaica, he faces an, a, a challenge. Another challenge. He faces another challenge. Because everybody know that, okay, they think that life is good for Sean. They think that life has been peachy because he's... So most brown-skinned, light-skinned people live in the upper echelon parts of Jamaica where they experience a good life. They travel every summer, every Christmas, every holiday. They take a plane. So they think that that's what Sean lived. So they don't know the struggle. If he doesn't tell you the story, you don't know. That's real. That's real. Yeah, Sean, Sean definitely, uh, he's very professional. I came with the... And down to make earth. Up Very down to earth. Um, but but yourself, I mean the whole like I said, the whole group of men, you know, is, is a dope group. It's, uh, we thankful because you know what, like you said, we've been stressing on from we started. Um, it's uh, where you're ordained to be, is where you're ordained to be. So, the, what do you what 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 does Richie mean to you though? Richie's like <laughs> my second father, my uncle, me me me, me cussout specialist. Is it me? Because that's might be the only person who will just tell me to fuck off. He's and, very and outspoken. And then come back and give me a hug same time. Like, very real. I, I would do that shit. So maybe yeah. that's the only person that do that shit to me. Yeah. Shit. So, but Richie's that person who I remember when um, I just put out a song, a video in 2017. And Richie just came off tour with Sean and he was like, yo, I love this song. This song's going to be the song. And we started campaigning with the song. He brought me to radio stations, TV wow. stations, wow. just using the fact that his connections. And that to me meant the world. When we actually got that song playlisted with um, news, Richie and I sat down one day and just laughed. Like just, I don't even know how we just, like we just, three of us just collectively just started laughing based on the fact that, you know, we accomplished something as, 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 as a crew. Like, yo, we actually did this. Richie's like, yes, need to get my percentage <laughs> of the management money now. <laughs> so That's it was just, beautiful. you know, Richie's a blessing. Um, people see the rough side of, of, of Rich, mm -hmm. but I see the, the loving, I see the father figure, I see the care that is, you know, exhumed in terms of if anybody's sick in the group. Richie is a doctor. Exactly. Richie is a bush specialist, not a doctor. <laughs> Richie <laughs> yeah. mix up some bush or he finds something to make sure that he's Very good. knowledgeable. So, very knowledgeable. So very. that is, and then he's the, 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 the person who 
have lived such a life that when he's telling you the stories, you feel like you're in the movies. You can, <laughs> you can actually go right. You can actually go write a, a, a movie or a song of of what he's saying. Mm-hmm. So stuff like that is it, that, that's the energy you need. So it's not just the head of security. It's not just the the, the big boss or the loud man. That's one of the most caring persons you will ever come across. Wow. And persons don't really get to understand that about the the, the giant. You know, wow. if you don't, if you're not close to the giant, you won't. So for for me, it's a baby giant. Ah, I'm still, <laughs> still a big baby giant. You know, don't make him ah, frighten you. So I gotta ask this, okay? So I know for because I've seen pictures of you before the movie, and you had longer dreads. So you had to cut your dreads off for the movie. Oh, don't remind <laughs> but me. But being because growing up, when I hear Rasta. Rasta not cut them hair. Rasta not cut them hair. So how did that mm. affect you being a Rasta and you had to cut your That's hair for this question. role? Ah, I was hoping you didn't ask that question. You was hurt, when you? Ah, <laughs> see, I couldn't see my eye. My name wasn't into the tears. You didn't save your locks? All right. I mean, my name not answered them. Let me, let me, let me get on myself. Okay. So this lock situation. Um, Flew into England on the Thursday. Mm-hmm. Um, rested the Friday. Saturday, I had to go to era makeup. So Saturday, went to era makeup. I already spoken to the hair person who was in charge of the locks. So he's like, yo, Aja, you don't have to worry. I got you. You're not going to have to cut your locks. I'm like, I'm in Jamaica feeling. No, I'm in, I'm in Jamaica feeling like a million bucks. All right, locks don't have to cut to cut. So when I got there, he's twisting it up, doing a little thing to for the wig to go on, for the hat to go on. And he's finished. Producer came around and was like, oh, that's not going to work. That's not going to work. I'm like, huh? So we spent 45 minutes to an hour twisting this thing up to try to get this whole head of locks that is at my waist right. into a type of look. And it, excuse me, never worked. So here did you what known? You're gonna have to cut it. Or we or, or we or we cast somebody else. Mm. Like, yeah, they're gonna have to cast somebody else. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm ready to get up. The stylist tapped me on my shoulder and was like, Brian, because he's from Trinidad. Brian, God give you a blessing and you're gonna just walk away from it like that, my brother. I'm like, dang. Ah, that's heavy. I'm like, he's like, yo, here can go back by. Okay, I'm gonna cut one and show you something. Cut it. Did use a crushing needle and, and attach it back. And attach it back. He's like, I got you by. Just cut the damn thing and making money by. You getting an opportunity of a lifetime. I'm like, all right, let's do this. Sit down and tup, 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 cut it. You're hot. No, I'm not hot yet. I'm like, all right, cool. Go back to the hotel room. Woo! <laughs> yeah, that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> We're coming out to you. Boom, yes. Boom, let me sit on. About three hours, my ball for Jesus. Me alone, I'm God. 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 Yes, because it's the thing. The don't cut their hair. Oh, God, we said that. Took his power. Man. It's like Samson and the dog. Bro, I felt so dirty. I felt like I fucked up in a major way. No joke. It was, all right, I did seven days in the UK at that time. So it was from the second. Of February to the il, to the night, came back to the st- went came back to the states had some shows, and it, luckily, I was talking to my manager Bruce, and he was like, "Yo, don't pay too much mind." News was saying the labor manager was saying, "Yo, don't pay too much mind to it." Because you know? have your locks, right? He gave you the locks. No, he had it in a bag ready and for me. For to, yeah, okay. so you know, <clears throat> they're like, "Yo, don't worry about it." Da 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 da. Because they had the middle was empty, but they had put the the edge back mm-hmm. on type shit. So when we went back to Jamaica, we cut it again. Um, when we cut it in Jamaica for the shooting, we did five weeks in Jamaica. They cut it again. I was like, they like, I was like, I'm not putting this shit back on. Because mm-hmm. when I did it in England, when I put back on, it felt like a, like I had prosthesis. Mm-hmm. It never, it never it, felt feel real. It never felt real because it's like I knew I cut this shit and that's that, that connection, it never felt the same. Mm-hmm. So I was like, yo, but yes, then, sure. so then I'm still wrestling with mine. I'm in Jamaica. I'm shooting the movie. I'm linking up. I'm not letting anybody see me. 
nobody see me. So my friends ain't seen me. I'm 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 in a corner. I'm just shooting the movie. It yeah. affected you, know? you. So mentally I'm fighting this fight. All right, jumped on a plane and came back to the States after the movie. Had a conversation with Taurus Riley. And believe me, that was what quieted my storm. Wow. And I needed that. What did he say? I needed a big brother to kind of just be like, yo, what the fuck are you doing? You don't need to answer to people. Um, you need to answer to God and yourself. You, you stepped up to be a man for your family and for yourself. Mm -hmm. An opportunity was presented. You got the chance to be the master of your own destiny. And that's what he did. And that quieted my storm wow. in such a way that even to, to the day, I'm so thankful for Taurus in, wow. that, in that regard because... I needed that. I needed somebody senior than me to kind of say, yo, like, we don't look at you any different. Cause it was kind of that, oh man, I messed up. They're going to say I sold out type thing. Cause you know, you have to deal with that little, mm -hmm. the little well, nuances, the, yeah, yeah. the nuances of that. Cause that's the thing that you grew up hearing about that's it, Because you know, you're not right. supposed to, it's not even, you know, you didn't take a Nazarene for, you know, mm -hmm. no comb, no, 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 no shit. You don't no, eat no, certain no, things, you know. That's why you don't yeah. eat certain, that's why you live a certain way. So, mm -hmm. and you know, like, like I said, it was a sacrifice, but then two things I looked at. I will never, not to say I can't, but there can only be one king, and that's Bob. Exactly. So Bob is the king of reggae. I cannot get bigger than Bob. That's, a, that's the start of all, the, the catalyst of it. Cool. And then two, I get to change my family's standings in society. So now I get to do something that's meaningful. My daughters can look on the screen mm -hmm. and be like, that's my dad. My friends can look and say, yo, that's my boy. Because the amount of calls that I get, yo, I'm like, yeah, man, I'm a friend for real. I, that's how I answer the phone from I say the name. Yeah, he's my friend for real. No joke. Mm -hmm. We boys who grew up together, everybody in the background be laughing. Like, <laughs> you, they know. So stuff like that, you know, you, you give thanks because you get to be immortalized. You get to be, do something that's greater than yourself. Wow. So thank you so much. Um, so top three artists top three of all, artists time. Of all time. Any genre. Dead or, or alive. Top three artists of all time. Any genre. What is ready in Sam Cook? I'ma give Barry some on it. I can't believe Otis this Redding, man Sam said Cook Otis Redding and Sam, Sam Cook. Cook and don't know nail song from Otis Redding. He ain't said on the do don't, don't ain't said do on the dock of nail, don't do baby. That. No. Don't I ain't do never that. I ain't never said on the <laughs> dock of nail. No, I ain't, no, guess what? I, 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 I like never, to do that. Never, no, uh, I like doing uh, that. I like doing that. What's the other song? Yes, uh, go, uh, go uh, Sam do, Cook. Go do your research. I know it's been a long time coming. I know that's what you're thinking about. In a little tent. So Change gonna you, come. You don't you, know none of these, you know when, but you, you gonna know, drop well, them too. You know when that song. You know that song was made the night before he died. I didn't know that. Okay, now you learned something. <laughs> <laughs> you can't tell. You can't test me with my knowledge. And of number music. one I'm, is Bob Marley, of uh, course. No, he didn't say. No, Bob I didn't Marley. say Bob. What? No, no that's I'm a thing. Good. No, I'm that's a thing he because said Barry's Hammond Barry was the last one. I like singers. Bob is a chanter. I like singers. Okay. And that Bob is a prophet. Bob is in a different category for me. Bob is a, is a philosopher for me. Mm -hmm. When it comes to, phil Bob is a philosopher for me. Okay. But when it comes to music on a talent wise, I did, I like talent. Well, let me ask you something. Cause I like talent and Shansia is over there. Um, and, uh, is that a name? Mm -hmm. and, yeah, uh, Shansia. Uh, uh, who else they got over there now? Spice. Jada Kingdom. Spice. You got Spice Jada Kingdom. You got Jada Kingdom. You got, Stark, Ashley, you got Moya, and you See, got, but a lot of Americans don't hear about Yeah, I don't hear about them girls. What was that other girl? Coffee, what was her name? Coffee, coffee. you have mm -hmm. coffee. Yeah, well, yeah. All right, hear what the thing is. Hear what the thing See, is. Americans only hear about certain, certain ones. Certain ones. All right. That come over, no. cross over. If, then it's, it's not even so much crossover, because hear what, you can travel and do your work, but hear what, you see, if you don't have that song that brings you to the mainstream. Sorry, the big song. So it's like, I want to put it this way. A lot of the times, they can be the biggest thing in Jamaica and mm -hmm. they're going to be a nobody outside of exactly. Jamaica. Okay. So it's like, you got to try to build the brand in such a way where it's not because no, it's not even about music. It's about how you look. It's about the marketability of everything. So now you find that everybody's saying the most disgusting things. Like everybody's trying to be who can say the most disgusting mm -hmm. shit yeah, to, yeah. To, 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 to be 
seeing. Yeah. That's where we're at in society now. Well, social media. Got, social we, got, media. No. we got a uh, sexy red. We got uh, yeah, see it? Yes. We yeah. got some we got some stuff over no, here. No, we got it. We got it yeah. in we we got, got it in Jamaica. We got too. it the, uh, we got we got wait a minute. Here we go. Um come 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 in our mouth and make it come to our nose all. Oh what? You see me that so you see Who me? Who sing that? Yeah? No, no Roger Wild man. Big up Roger Wild. Wow. Lord. We like Tom Frank. We like go on, go on. We like pop. <laughs> that is all. Oh, Let's see the chat. <laughs> she can't shy, shy. It's she going have a war down. <laughs> I'm trying to show the girls some love. That was all that was. Just showing the nah, female no, artists that is some no, love. No, the female. You know? All right. Like for me, it's just because I see Sensia trying to tap into a formula. She's trying to figure it out. Because mm-hmm. that's all it is. It's just experimenting with the music. Like I love my ladies. I love my female artists. Um, I do like, you know. So it's just for them to figure it out. It's yeah. just it's it's gonna be it's gonna be a challenge because here what we in a world that um, morals has dropped to a new low. So the standard is low. So now the females are trying to figure out where can I go to be be seen. So sometimes just that they gotta go lower than they really wanna to go. It's like who can mm-hmm. give the lowest blow. But you put morals aside to do all of to that. To do that, yeah. you get what I'm saying? Because well, remember, you know, when, well, you, when you're coochie pink and, 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 you're, and you're something brown, you know, mm. and, you're, and your booty all brown, you know, that, <laughs> and then you want him a lipstick after booty brown and, 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 yeah. and coochie pink. What uh-huh. the fuck? Who gonna buy that? <laughs> yeah. You put booty brown on your lip? But yeah. her, fan, her fans will. They, yeah, no, they it's, it's a, that, the, the nasty ass <laughs> people putting <laughs> shit on your lip. Eating ass motherfucker. Okay, <laughs> my last question for you. Okay. Be- I want to know, because right now, I want to say half of society, especially the, the black society, everybody going dreads nowadays. You understand? They not, may not particularly be a wrestler, but everybody doing dreads. How you feel about all of, you know, being dreads, the fashion dread or whatever you want to call it, compared to, you know? Peter said it best. Morgan okay. Richards said it best. You don't have to dread to be rasta. Don't have it dread. This is not a dreadlock stick. Divine conception of your heart. So it's like that. So seeing people put on locks, we know they ain't rasters. We know by the live, by the way you walk, by the way you talk. We know. So, you know, rasters, at times you might want to be offended, but we understand, say, you know, no comb, not supposed to go up on your head and think. To them is style. So when you see my locks and you see their locks, you're gonna see two different energies. That's right. Mm-hmm. That's you get what I'm saying? You're gonna, exactly see, you're gonna see two, so you're gonna know what is style and what is the real thing. So it's just simple as that. By the fruits, you shall know them. Because they it. don't That's know, it. they don't know what a rasta is. No, they, no, they don't understand just, the culture. Well, a lot of them kids over here got, you know, they, they say they got it from like in Chicago. You are, you have no, from Larry oh, Hoover Jr. Oh, okay. yeah. Larry Hoover when he had dreads and, and, and That's they, where it started. That's where they started. Okay. A lot well, then you have new, you have, remember New Orleans is a is a dread place. New Orleans got um, certain mm, um, yeah. Florida, the A as well, Atlanta. So you got couple states that. Mess and with the dreads heavy. Spread everywhere so, like just, that. so a lot of it, all right, like even in Jamaica, dreadlocks is different because this is just locks. locks. I just left my ear, let it do what to it. And then you have a thing called sister locks. Yeah. And then now you have interlock mm-hmm. and then something there now. You see mm-hmm. what I mean? Mm-hmm. So, but once you hear sister lock and thing, people need their dreads up just to try to keep it fresh. I ain't knocking nobody on that because, you know, keep yourself looking fresh. Be royal and, and, and queenly at the same time. But, you know, like I said, by the fruits. You know, by the fact that okay, you see them eating pork. That ain't no rasta. You Rastas don't eat pork. We don't eat meat. You get what I'm saying? So they don't eat meat at all. Most the most rastas will go to is is is, is fish. Fish. Yeah, right. seafood. So that's the furthest some will go. Some don't eat meat any at all. So straight vegan. Wow. Mm-hmm. So the the liberty and the lifestyle is kind of strict. So when people see the locks, these are tentacles or connection to the earth. It's not just growing something. These are connection, a rootical connection to the atmosphere and to earth and to mother earth. So we stay connected. And that started from Ethiopia. Well, the movement started in Jamaica, but Ethiopia is the is the motherland. That's where His Majesty came from. That's where Ali Selassie came from. So Ali Selassie is seen as the king, as the emperor, as God in flesh. So wow, Ailey would be the Jesus of this for time the rest, for, for Rasta. Okay. Yeah. Man, thank you so much for coming on the show, man. How can people get a hold to you if they're trying to link up? You don't know what you 
R A S A J A I music on Instagram. It's R A S A J A I music on Instagram. It's R A S A J A I Spotify, Apple Music, YouTube. And you have new music coming out. We'll keep a new music coming soon, man. Oh, have some, really? we have and some. before we leave you, you gotta give us something. Oh, you Sing want to okay. Yeah, I want to hear us one of them, one of them ones, huh? Oh, the artist one right now. Uh, the artist one. The artist one right when, now. When Luke no. and Fire come on, he say, I'm on the bed. He was going in. You, you, uh, so, you, well, I know. Uh, me could I tell you about your seat. Motion around the street. Never have a girl pa repeat how we back it no week. Lifestyle in a cheap. Bearded face in a jeans. Could I tell you about your seat? Dirty rock around the street. Never have a girl pa repeat. You know, see the rass at. Have about a dozen girl over Ken Cat. Baby, why you making up your face like that? Come on, girl, you know, say me love you like that. Calm down yourself, my girl, make good chat. Say me no, no behavior, but this a style that she love. Love him, make she have a crawl on the ground. Girl, him a ball and a pay for me love. She get a touch and now she can't get it done. In a real life, nobody feel like it. Easy if you take it three points. Dirty rock around the ground and what you feel like. I'm gonna represent... In a real life, man. Man, man yeah, respect, man. man. God, respect, man. God, man. You know it goes. Hey, man, thank you for coming on the show, man. Thank you very we much. We love Abby. you, Raza Thank John. you very much, It's Abby. been another great segment boss of talk, Boss Talk 101, where the bosses talk. And we out. You know I got. Yeah, I'm done. <laughs>